Well, first of all, I'm excited. This is a first review that I've done in this new base. That's the first thing. Second thing is to start this off with a question. How many of you choose your golf clubs based on looks and the type of irons in this case that you think you should be playing in terms of the category that you've been pigeonholed into? I'm going to look at two irons today, which arguably could make the game a lot easier for most average golfers out there. But for some reason, we still choose to ignore them. I'm talking about two irons from Callaway. Uh, fairly recent releases, both on B21 that came out the latter part of last year and the brand new DCB model, which uh, they're very much different, but they're both aimed at the same market. They would class themselves as game improvement irons. This one, the B21, would uh, be what we call the super game improvement category. I love that. Who doesn't want some super game improvement? Well, I know I do. We're gonna start off by looking at the difference in terms of how they sit at address because that's going to be a big big deal because there's some major differences and none more so than the offset at address which is uh, something that will be off-putting and discount you straight away from looking at both these clubs the two irons i've got in hand are a four and a five iron five of the dcb four iron of the b21 because the longer the club gets the more noticeable the offset is and in theory that offset will help certain golfers and it won't others but the chart in front of you now tells you the difference between these two models and it's quite a significant one um, and at address it is very very notable so some golfers would dismiss that straight away but these are very different at address like i said the, the b21 clearly is um it's almost set back that club face once you get down to this long end of the bag not so noticeable i must say in the five iron even though if you stuck it against the blade i'm sure it's clearly there but the other major difference is the size of the profile of these clubs. What the DCB is, they've done a tremendous job in making what they've classed as a game improvement iron in a very, very compact head. You go to the B21 and it's that thick top line. You see certainly down the four, four iron, even down at the eight iron that I've got, you start to see the back end. But again, that's that difference between identifying what type of golfer you are, what level you play at, and what is it you want to see it address. Do you want, does it give you the confidence to see the bulk and mass, or would you just rather see the tidy, more neat version that is in the, uh, in the DCB? So two very clear differences that you've got to decide which one is best for you. Looks very different, offset very different. How do they differ in terms of performance? I've got three irons in each of these uh, models. I'm going to start hitting some balls, I think. See how these things do in the hands of the average golfer. Am I again being ignorant? I say ignorance, I've been a big admirer of both these models, I must say. Whether I put them in the bag or not is another thing, but that's the question. Are we being a little bit ignorant, ignoring the benefits of these type of clubs? Right, so what I've got is three irons from each set. Like I said, unfortunately, I've got a nine, seven, and a five from the DCB. And in the B21, we've got an eight, six, and a four. So I'll draw the parallels and I'll tell you the loft differences when we get into the numbers. <coughs> but it'll certainly work for what we're trying to do. First thing is down at that short end of the bag. The difference in the compactness of each of these clubs is hugely significant. And um, the profile of the DCB, well, it's incredible what they've done. Like I said from Callaway, if this performs as good, into, when I say as good, if it's as forgiving, if it's as easy to launch the ball, if the ball speeds are as good, as what is in that B21 to, to, to get that into this compact head. That's a phenomenal feat because this looks like a head to all intents and purposes, very much still a player's, a player's iron. Don't forget major difference that I've not mentioned yet. This is a forged head. B21 isn't. The rest of the similarities in terms of how it's made up are very much uh, exactly the same. Um, but major difference there in terms of that forge feel. So we're going to go straight out of that nine into an eight iron, see how much difference there is in terms of that sound and feel. It's a lot more clickier with that uh, B21. Is that a bad thing? I'm not so sure, you know. Well, I just had an interesting conversation. It prompted me to ask this question to you because what I, the statements I just made was that uh, hitting these B21 irons, or the DCB for that matter, is what my statement was i'm sure i would score better if i had this type of iron in the bag but i don't 
and I do these videos um, and mention this kind of statement, make this statement quite frequently. And I do know that it's, uh, it's, a, it's an issue that uh, I think many golfers would share and that's that we're driven towards um, a category, like I said earlier, of iron that perhaps we think we should fall in. All the things that we're told is negative about super game improvement irons we shy away from. But the reality is, uh, like I said, I think that I would possibly score better with a set of B21s right throughout the bag. It's so, it's such an easy iron to play. They're incredible. Um, so the question is, how many of you would fall into that category? How many of you do you think you're buying irons or equipment full stop that perhaps is not best suited to your game? Do you know what? I think we're pretty much done. There's, uh, we can drag these things out, but ultimately the choices you've got to make in terms of the difference between the two sets of irons, I think we've highlighted. The profile is majorly different between the two, which caught me a little bit by surprise, to be honest with you, because when I thought of the idea of pitching it, well, a, a viewer actually recommended this video, so I uh, won't take credit for that. Um, but the, the, I thought, perfect, two game improvement irons, when you pitch them side by side, they couldn't be further from... Uh, each other chalk and cheese. I mean, the DC Beta, class it as a game improvement iron, is, uh, yeah, it's a strange category to put it in. It's so much smaller in profile, top line, sole width, all those things, so different. Offset is there on the DCB, but once again, nothing like what you see on the Big Bertha. So there are the differences in terms of what you will see and sway you either way before you even maybe start to try. The other thing is the price. It's a significant difference again. So if you're swayed, if price is a, is a key issue for you, then obviously that is a big deal. And the thing I'll talk about before I get into the numbers is the sound and feel. The DCB is this, uh, doesn't sound as soft, let's see, let's say as the apex pro so although it's a forged iron it's got some tungsten in there it doesn't feel as soft as what the apex pro does in my opinion and then you go to the b21 it's a different sound but it's not a sound that i'm necessarily uh, would be put off by to be quite honest with you it's um it's not offensive in any way it's soft enough and again for the category that it's in so although you would say maybe it's a slightly softer feeling than the DCB for me, not majorly different. That wouldn't be a reason why I would choose one over the other. It would be size and profile when you're looking at those individual preferences. But for performance wise, um, we'll start off with the seven iron numbers, which is where you would always start off a review. Uh, the DCB, um, 6,000 spin, 163 carry, 19.2 launch. I mean, that's a pretty... Um, damn good set of numbers ball speed 117 a peak height of 100 that's launching into kind of orbit it's just an incredibly good set of numbers there from the uh, dcb i'll put up alongside it now uh, that of the um b21 and then you're looking at uh, a 176.6 on average carry 18.8 launch 4831 spin and I do apologize, the B21, sorry, was a six iron. So you see the differences in loft have had an impact there, uh, as they would do. Ball speed 121, peak height of 104. The interesting thing for me again there was the uh, peak height 104, incredibly high launching ball from a stronger lofted club. So again, all those different things that go into the mix in terms of, yes, stronger lofted, but a bigger head profile allows the CG to be further back, allows the ball to still launch plenty high enough and the spin number at 4831 on a six iron with that kind of descent angle and the descent angle was where's the descent angle 48.4 off a six iron that thing's stopping you know that's again nothing i would dismiss dismiss as being a negative in terms of uh, that seven iron number but for me I'm not going to look at the lower end. Nine irons, I think, you know, we're all more comfortable with that shorter iron in hand. But then when you go to the longer end of the bag, the five and four, that's where it gets interesting for me. So we will go to the five iron numbers of DCB. Um, 180 carry, 17.8 launch, 126 ball speed, peak height of 110, land angle of 49.9 degrees. I mean, they're just optimum numbers i mean that's an incredible set of stats in my opinion uh it, it's just amazing and five five spin that's a game improvement iron numbers i've just read out there they just that defies that category i almost think like i said it's an injustice to put them into that category and you then go to the four iron of the b21 again don't forget four iron not five iron but this is incredible 196.6 carry four two spin 13 three launch 
87 peak height, still a land angle, land angle of 42.4. Yeah, that's with a four iron. We got some uh, imagery from the back um, of the bay, which hopefully we got shot tracer on and you'll have seen how that four iron launched incredibly well. As did every iron that I hit from both the ranges, to be quite honest with you. So in terms of data, I honestly believe that maybe four or five years ago, less than that, there were the, I, they, them kind of numbers you'd have never dreamt from getting out of this kind of category of iron. No, not a chance in hell. So again, where I've always seen the changes in terms of um, technology in these last few years, it's been in this type of iron. This is a prime example of where we've seen it. So that kind of stat, why would you then, as an average golfer, as a whatever class of category you want to put yourself in, you couldn't ignore those numbers on any sort of, on, on any category of it. You know, even, even so much as the spin number, descent angles, launch angles, consistency, all those things are the negatives that we'd look at of this type of category of iron four or five years ago. And that's gone out the window. So I can waffle on all day, but I think, cause I'm preaching to not even the converted here because I'm one of those people that still looks at irons that uh, are perhaps a little bit more difficult to use. Um, but I still choose to go down that route. I have no idea why. I, and, and maybe the time has come to, like I said, change that mentality. But I, all I would say is that if you're an average golfer out there, if you're looking to try a set of irons, never dismiss any type of iron based on um, preconception, I suppose is the best way of putting it. And for those of you considering buying the DCB or the B21, if they are on your list, if that's the type of iron that you're looking at, I would try both and uh, certainly see it's the little tiny nuances that are going to persuade you one way or another as to uh, which route you might go down. But I, either of these, I think, are a fantastic set of irons from Callaway. I really do. Mega impressed. Anyway, first review done in, uh, in the new bay. Well, actually, I can't believe the temperature because I'm sat here being able to go through these numbers and uh, the shutter door's still open. Incredible. Um, bit different, but we got there in the end. As ever, thank you for watching. Um, subscribe I hate doing all this subscribe and uh, hit the like button and all them things but more importantly just join in with the comments down below and uh, I will see you all very soon